From the magnificent Midwest, it's The Suzanne Venker Show, where men and women are equal in value but wildly different by nature. Join us here every week as we challenge the culture's hugely flawed narratives about men, women, sex, and love. From coast to coast and from around the world, thank you for joining us. So I want to talk about multitasking today. And specifically, if it may possibly be undermining your marriage or relationship for that matter. I, I wrote a bit about multitasking in one of my books from like 10 years ago. Um, after I had written, uh, sorry, after I had, I had read a book called the myth of multitasking by Dave Crenshaw, which I highly recommend. I mean, it was written a while. It was written back in the, I guess 10 years ago, but it's obviously just as relevant today, maybe more so. But the message of his book is that, was that the human brain is like a computer, that it's only capable of focusing on one thing at a time. And switching back and forth between different or among, I should say, different tasks, a whole myriad of different tasks cannot overcome the brain's inability to process two sets of information simultaneously and that what people are really doing when they're attempting to multitask is switch tasking. That's what he calls it or moving back and forth between one task and another, never really completing one successfully in the way that you would, of course, if you were singularly focused. And so therefore, the entire concept of multitasking, which we talk about all the time, like it's just normal, is actually a myth. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Hmm, well, I multitask every day, all day. So what does this mean? (laughs) Um, And how do we not do that, given our new world? So I want to clarify that it's not a blanket statement. I mean... If you asked someone like Crenshaw, he probably would say it's a blanket statement, but um, that you can't do two things at once. But of course, there are degrees of this. So for example, you can certainly talk on the phone while you fold laundry. You can probably cook while listening to a podcast. And you might even be able to cook while you're helping your, you know, first or second grader with homework. But here's where it gets uh, a little more complex. The fancier the recipe and the more complicated the homework, the less successful you're going to be at either one. That's why I specified first or second grade homework, because what if you were trying to help your 10th grader with calculus? Assuming you knew how to do that, which I do not. But let's say we did. And you were also cooking. Chances are you're either not going to be effective at helping him or her with calculus, or you're going to end up being really effective in that department and your food's going to burn. So you have to really use common sense and consider the task at hand that you're trying to accomplish. And when I say you, I mean, we, let me specify that we, we all do every single one of us, especially because of what we've got going on today, technologically, technology wise, that's what I wanted to say, technology wise. So a more comprehensive answer to whether or not multitasking is a myth is that it depends on the type of task you're trying to do. So here's a great example, a larger example than, you know, cooking and folding laundry and all that. I, you might have noticed, um, have over the last, I don't know, two years um, attempted to do various things that I said were coming up. And those things were big things that took or would have taken or did take months and months and months of work. And there was a time at which I stopped this podcast altogether. If you remember, if you've been with me since the beginning, I did it for three years nonstop every, every week without fail. And then I was attempting to, to do a course, put, put a course together. 
And I bowed out of the podcast so that I could focus on that. The, 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 the reality is, though, what I've come to learn now that I'm back with the podcast and I gave up that idea of the course um, is that I realize how much, and this is true for so many entrepreneurs, I really was juggling at one time all under the umbrella of, you know, entrepreneurship. And it's kind of par for the course for what we do. But the truth is, the work is never done. And there's always more you can do. And juggling too much means you're not going to do any of them well. And it has been my experience since I pretty much stopped creating um, content that, you know, Again, there's content and there's content. I mean, the content I was trying to create was big. You don't just, it's like writing a book is like, I mean, it's huge. It's everything. You can't do something else alongside that very well. Same with putting together a course. So I have found that since I stopped those tasks and have focused exclusively on the podcast, that uh, my mind is so much more streamlined because this has got, this has now got the bulk of my energy. I do coach, as you know, but that doesn't require creating content behind the scenes. That requires showing up. So these are the decisions that you have to make as an entrepreneur about what you can do simultaneously. And I realized how much I really was doing. Um, So that's that's what I mean. Now, that's not going to necessarily apply to many of you, but you understand the gist of what I'm saying. So we are all now thinking we're nasty multitaskers in all kinds of smaller ways. Um, technology has changed everything as it's gotten greater and greater. So the attempt to multitask has only become more prevalent and more impossible since the advent of specifically smartphones. And I was listening to an art art of manliness podcast. Love that podcast as well. I think a lot of you will as well, if you don't um, know about it. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, And a couple weeks ago, uh, another author of the book, the 12 monotasks had this to say on that um, episode. He said, reading a book, strengthens your attention. Smartphones fragment it. And when you think about it, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because when you're reading a book, and I like the old fashioned actual physical books in my hand, your entire focus is on the one story or material, whatever, depending on what kind of book it is, in that one book. When you are on a smartphone, there is no such thing as one thing. You are literally trying to move back and forth between texts, emails, the internet, podcasts, you name it. And at no point when you're on your phone, and then of course the reels, the reels are, I should say that, I should have said that first, um, that are just endless scrolling and scrolling and there's no, there's no end to it. So And then in the middle of doing that, you'll get a text or whatever. So you, it's completely different from reading. So because smartphones have replaced old school reading, our attention spans are even worse than they were obviously before. But smartphones, since they become the number one way in which we now choose to multitask, because usually the multitasking that we do today, as opposed to, I don't know, you know, 15, 20 years ago, because you could have still multitasked. 15 or 20 years ago, but it didn't involve a smartphone. Now, the bulk of our multitasking involves a smartphone. So how do you know if this attempt at multitasking using the smartphone is hurting your marriage or relationship? Well, basically, if you're unable to keep the phone either in another room while you're talking to your spouse or here's an easier one 
not as dramatic, is to just turn it over on the table so that it's face down when you're talking to your spouse. If you cannot do these things, then I would say your attempt at multitasking is undermining your marriage. Because if you cannot give your full attention to the person in front of you, you're going to have a problem. Needless to say. Now, some people will call this a smartphone addiction. You can call it what you want, I suppose. I'm going to focus on the idea of multitasking because, um, I mean, I guess I could say we're all addicted to our smartphones, but I think of it as a multitasking thing. You know, you're, you're, you're talking to someone, but then you're expecting a call from somebody or, or, or you use the phone in conjunction with what you're talking about with your spouse. Wait, I got to look that up and think, and we all do this. I'm no exception. What, what I am saying is that, and that's not going away. That's the other thing, unless you literally didn't have a smartphone. So what can you do? A, be aware, just, just a simple awareness so that you can talk about it and acknowledge this isn't good. If I'm going to talk to you, I need to give you my undivided attention and put the phone down, turn it over on the table so you don't see whatever's going on on the face of that phone when it's sitting there on the table between you. That is a distraction to the conversation at hand and the attention should be on the other, on the other person exclusively. If you need to put it in another room in order to really get it out of your headspace, even better. But I, again, I'm realizing that we all walk around with our phones and they're usually by our side. So you probably wouldn't be able to move it into another room every time you have a conversation of substance with your spouse or anyone else for that matter. So a great alternative, as I say, is to turn it over so that the face is not up. That's a really big thing that I think the majority of people listening right now can identify with and say, oh yeah, been there, seen that, done that, not known what to do about that, or begged him or her to do something about that or whatever. I know you can relate because it's just the way we live, but there are things you can do. And if you are constantly having a conversation with your spouse and finding that you cannot focus because you're constantly moving on to your phone, that's a problem. Now that might, I mean, you might, some of you might conclude that it moves into addiction mode, which might be a different conversation, but I don't know. I don't think so. I still think that you just need to develop specific habits to stop the multitasking, what I'm going to call the multitasking and not the addiction. Um, and to start thinking about what this other gentleman from this book was suggesting was monotasking. I liked that word mono, which means one, obviously. So you're going to focus on one thing at a time. So what are the ways in which we can do that to start putting this into practice now so that we can show up in our relationships in the way that we know we should and the, and in a way that will clearly strengthen and not take away from um, the quality of our relationships, whether it's, I, I'm focusing on marriage because that's what I do, but you can certainly apply this to friends, to friends or even coworkers. Number one, turn off your notifications. Turn them off. Why does anybody need to be notified about what so-and-so's doing on Instagram or Facebook or whatever the case may be. I don't have any notifications, so I don't know what people get notifications for. I just know that I can go into my settings and turn them all off. And that over the years I, I have, um, if I want to know something, I'll decide when I'm going to go find out about it. I don't want to be dinged. So that's just a really obvious, simple, common sense, immediate thing you can do is just turn off those notifications. Unless that's, you know, this, now this, I'm hopefully some of you might have a business phone and a, and a personal, and those are separate. So I'm not talking about business related stuff or money stuff that you might need, I don't know, uh, to know about. Although even then I would say, do you have to know about it right then? But you know, you can be the judge of that. I'm talking about really your personal life here, not your business life. Number two, I think this is, um, there's, well, hold on, let me back up and go to some of the smaller ones or the ones that won't happen as often and then come back to the the main one. Take a walk 
out in nature without your phone, like put your phone, keep it at home and go take a walk. As opposed to whatever did you do on your phone while you're walking? I'm not saying that's bad to do. And I do think you can walk. I do think it's possible to walk and listen to something, music, podcast, or whatever simultaneously. I do it. That That is doable. I'm just saying that if you're wanting to practice monotasking, that might be an area for you that you, you know, you don't necessarily um, depend on or need to do something phone related and taking a walk without a phone is a great um, mental exercise. You know, it could just be 30 minutes a day just to get you out of that tech space and into your own brain and thoughts without any interruptions. So that's a really good one. I like that. Here's another one we're all going to identify with. (laughs) Again, guilty as charged. Don't watch TV with your phone sitting next to you. (laughs) Just, Just try putting the phone in the other room and watching an entire movie without reaching for the phone. And I know how tempting that is because you want to look something up the moment. Wait, I think I know her or him from where did I see her from? And then you Google it, right? I get it. But just, these are just things you can practice doing and see what it used to be like before we multitask with our smart smartphones all the time for during a, an event or task or whatever that should be really enjoyable on its own and should be a mono task. So watching a movie with your spouse with no phones in the room, just try it. See how you see how it feels. See if you like it. My guess is that you'd like it so much that that's just how you would watch TV or a movie with your spouse going forward. Try to cook something. I don't know what number this is. This is three, four, three, one, two, three. Four, four, try to cook something that's kind of involved, you know, something, you you know, where you follow a recipe or have to read a recipe as opposed to something, you know, really well without doing anything else. I mean, anything else, meaning in your phone, your phone's not in there. You just are just focused exclusively on creating something really awesome in the kitchen because that takes attention for sure. You have to read the recipe. Have you ever done that? You're like reading the recipe and someone else is talking to you or, you know, you move your uh, attention over to your phone and then you're lost on, wait, how much was that? Three fourths, one fourth, that kind of thing. It, it's see if how the recipe comes out better. <laughs> I'm sure that it will. Um, and again, it's like that mental practice of monotasking. That kind of, these are, these are just little ways. You don't have to do all of them. These are just thoughts about how to um, get back into the monotasking um, uh, a practice of that so that it becomes easier to focus on one thing over time because you're, you know, developing that muscle. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Five. Talk to your spouse and your kids without your phone. Just talk to them without your phone. And if you're dealing with, well, actually, yeah, whether you're talking about your spouse or your kids, have them do the same. Practice being in a space where you're just having the conversation without the phone. And hopefully when and if you're having dinners together, that's an automatic rule. I think Bill and I have talked about that when when our one of our parenting series. Like that just should be a given in, in my book. So hopefully some of you are already doing that at dinner time. But if you're not sitting down for dinner regularly, then you're gonna have to exercise this muscle by sort of forcing the issue a bit. So that's another idea of really, what's it feel like to just talk to somebody without any, you know, without any distractions, not multitasking, just monotasking. Okay. And then this last one, I, I was going to say it at first, I saved it for last because I think it's the one you're going to be able to do most often because of the way in which we all live and work on our computers. If, if, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's basically, basically if you're on your computers, which most of us usually are set a timer for the task that you need to do 
whether it's a personal task or a work task. Set a timer for it. Turn your phone over like you did, like I suggested before when you're in a conversation with someone, but this is just you by yourself, say with the computer. Turn your phone over or move it out of the room. Same, same idea. Or you could turn your whole phone off. That's another idea. And close your email box. That's something I just sort of recently started doing. And it was really effective because I found myself, especially for what I do, because it's so intense and involves the computer and a lot of thinking and writing. And, um, you know, you've got to take a break. And it's too easy to move over into my inbox and answer an email or a text on my phone while I'm creating something. And then I get off track and I'm not practicing or building that muscle of, of true focus. So I have found that turning my computer, my phone over, so it's face down and then I'm not even tempted to look at it. I don't see anybody, you know, texting me. Um, and, and closing my email tab altogether to be super helpful. And I think, like I said, I want to save that one for the last because that seems to me to be the most obvious way that we can practice this monotasking and just do one thing at a time and close those tabs. Um, I mean, to me, I just don't know any other way of going forward effectively in trying to get something accomplished in a calm, peaceful, unstressful way but to remove the distractions and stop trying to multitask. And to circle back to with how I opened this, we talk about multitasking as though it's normal, mainly because it's just so prevalent and we, it's all we know, but we're actually talking about something that isn't even real or doable because you're actually not accomplishing what you think you're accomplishing. And this is what's causing so many people to be so, to feel so stressed out and ineffective and overwhelmed. I think overwhelmed is a big one. And there is no stopping the smartphones or the tech or the way we're living from, from doing what it's going to do. There is no way. So you have to be proactive if you want to be less stressed and have a you know just better mental better mental health all the way around. You have to create the environment to get better and to do better because there's nothing you can do about the fact that it's always going to be there. That's what I'm trying to say. So I hope these, these little tips, um, turning off your notifications, turning your phone over, um, moving it out of the room, um, taking a walk, you know, without anything, um, trying to watch a a movie without your phone there and looking stuff up while you're doing it. These are all little ideas for how to monotask and get us, get ourselves back into the mode of seeing what it feels like to really focus on one thing at a time. All I can say is, the more you focus on one thing, the more successful you're going to be at that thing. That is a given. And I don't think anybody can argue that. And if we know that, then, and we really think about that, then you realize what multitasking is doing to us. We are constantly feeling unsuccessful because we're stretched too thin. So just to bring it back finally to, you know, the relationship space, which is really what I wanted to do with this, although I went in a little bit of a different direction. Um, When you are doing something else while you are talking with your spouse or doing anything with your spouse, um, you are telling him or her that you have other priorities, that he or she or it, the relationship itself, is not the priority in that moment. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about 
light conversations about, you know, where you're going to be today and you need to coordinate and use your phones to be able to coordinate your day. I'm not talking about that necessarily. I'm talking about actual bona fide um, uh, substantive conversations that you need to have with your spouse, whether it's about your relationship, whether it's about parenting, whether it's about money, whether it's about, you know, all the big things, not how are we going to get through the day schedule wise? That's, that's okay. I just mean the big things so that the person feels as though they come first and they have your attention. And if you're constantly um, letting them know otherwise with those actions, even if you're not talking about it, believe me, it's, it's affecting your relationship. I guarantee you it's affecting your relationship. And whether you're the man or the woman, the husband or the wife, you should be together making those overtures to your spouse about how we're going to proceed going forward so that we have better communication by not multitasking while we're talking. And that should be like like a hard and fast rule in your relationship that you both agree on. It's not complicated. It's not difficult. And it's, and it's necessary because you can only do that for so long before the, you're, you're not feeling, um, close and loved and prioritized. Okay. That's all I've got. You, that's all I've got for you guys today. See you next week. And that ends this hour of the Suzanne Venker show. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and to leave us a review as well as share this episode with a friend. As always, you may reach me with any questions or comments at Suzanne at the Suzanne Venker show.com. And if you would like to support this podcast, which would be very much appreciated, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the Suzanne Venker show. Thanks everyone. Have a good week. Thank you.